Welcome to Botany class. Here we are discussing about the neat wise points in the uh, that is the plant kingdom chapter. So which is having a good weightage in the neat as well as in the M set. And here what we have to go is the very quick glance of the matter in the plant kingdom topic itself. So plant kingdom, plant kingdom, according to Bentham and Hooker, plant kingdom is basically divided into two sub kingdoms. That is the cryptogamy and the phenerogamy kingdom, sub kingdoms. So cryptogamy, under cryptogamy, he kept all the non-flowering plants and in the phenerogamy sub kingdom, he kept all the flowering plants. And this cryptogamy is again divided into three divisions now. The sub kingdom is divided into divisions over here. So here the divisions are the Thalophyta, Bryophyta and Tridophyta. Three divisions are there. In these three divisions, on what basis he has divided this plant kingdom, that is the sub kingdom, cryptogamy into the divisions based on the habitat. That means where they are surviving and what is the structure of these organisms and based on the place where they are growing, based mostly based on this only, he has divided the plant kingdom, that is the sub-kingdom, cryptogamy into the divisions, that is the halophyta and the organization of the organism, that means how they look, occurrence of the organism, the structure of the organism, so that is also very, very important in classifying this, whereas the thalophytic organisms looks like the thallus. That is, that does not have a specific plant body. That means the plant body cannot be divided into root stem and the leaves. So here, this is the basic concept of dividing this subdivision into the uh, sub, sub kingdom into the divisions. Okay. So in this like this, the, in the thalophyta, all the organisms which does not have a specific plant body, that is a specific th plant shape, that all kept under the division thalophyta. And in the bryophyta, these organisms are the organisms which are starting their life in the land as well as in the water. Both the mediums, the organisms can survive. So these are also called as the amphibians of the entire plant kingdom. Because they can survive inside the water and outside the water. That means without water also these organisms can survive. So that is called as the <laughs> amphibians of the entire plant kingdom. And the next comes the third division is the pteridophytic organisms. These pteridophytic organisms are completely the land plants. That means they are growing only on the land. Those are the pteridophytic plants. And these plants will be having the plant body can be divided into root, stem and the leaf-like structures. So here the clear occurrence of the plant body, that is the structure is the most important one and where they are growing. These two are the basic concepts of dividing the sub-kingdom cryptogamy into the divisions. So what they will ask in the neat exam is this point only. Okay, they stress on this point what I am now I am saying. And then comes the thalophytas division. This thalophyta division is again divided into two subdivisions. Okay, that is the algae and the fungal organisms. And in this on this division only having the two subdivisions, whereas bryophyta and tridophyta does not have any further subdivisions. Now the division is not divided again. So they does not have they directly they are having the classes in them not the subdivisions. But the thalophyta division is again divided into subdivision, that is the algae and the fungi. So in this, how why they, are, they, they kept the fungal organisms also into this division? Because into this division. So because the fungal organisms does not have the specific plant body, okay? And they are all heterotrophic in our nature. And why they kept, why Bentham and Hooker kept this one as the subdivision in the division bryophyta, in the division thalophyta. So, so here, what is, what is, the, what was their intention? Because the fungi, they, according to Whittaker, he has given a separate kingdom. Why they have given a subdivision category? That means down to this kingdom. That is not the separate kingdom. 
why they have given myths. They said that fungal organisms does not have that much of a birth to give a specific kingdom for them. We need to give them uh, under the kingdom a division. That means a part of the kingdom, but they cannot have a separate kingdom for themselves because they are like the plant, but they won't be looking like a plant. They act. Acting is different. Looking like the plant is different because these fungal organisms are having the root-like structures, stem-like structure, and the, the seeds, what we are saying in the plant body, fruits and the seeds. That is the next generation, how it will propagate. This is a spore formation can be seen in the fungal organisms. That cannot be seen in any other microorganisms. So we have to keep them in the subdivision halophyta. Okay. And here, these are all the non-flowering plants. Halophyta, bryophyta, tridophyta. Cryptogamy is a non-flowering kingdom, sub-kingdom. So, under this, whatever the organisms comes, those are the non-flowering. That means that does not have the flowering capacity. This is the main, part, main thing what we need to refer and remind till the neat exam over for us. Okay. And then this is sub, this is subdivision. That is the algae. Here we have to stress on the algae. Why? Right? Because the fungal kingdom we have already seen. And we will discuss again that about the fungal organisms in a separate class. Now we will discuss only about the algal members. And these algal members are the ones which are coming under the subdivision algae and belongs to the division halophyta. That means the plant organisms what we can say in the thalophyta, the plant body does not have a specific shape. It cannot be distinguished into the root stem and the leaf-like structures. And the any shape can be seen in this thalophytic organisms, a thallus-like plant body. And mostly they are aquatic in nature. Aquatic in nature. That's the most important one, what we need to revise and remember for this thalophytic organisms. And these thalophytic organisms, can, uh, they are root-like structures are present only to balance the body on the water surface. Otherwise, inside the water, whatever may be submerged, suspended, otherwise the submerged one and the above the water surface, free floating anything, but the root-like structures are present. And then that is in only in the algal members. Okay. And then some are, does not have the root-like structures also, but there is nothing is important for the root-like structures. After that, the entire organisms, all these organisms are covered with a specific cell wall and the cell wall is the two-layered or three-layered. Mostly the two-layered cell wall can be seen in these organisms and in some cases we can see the three-layered cell wall and the cell wall is covered externally. Above the cell wall, a mucilaginous sheath is present for this entire, all this thalophytic organism. That means in the thalophyta, the subdivision, what we are saying is the algae. In them, in the algal members, what we can say, algal members are the ones which are is completely aquatic in nature and the free floating, otherwise the submerged organisms and having the thallus-like plant body and they won't be having the, some organisms may have the root-like structure, some may not have. And the cell wall is a, the two-layered or three-layered cell wall. And the cell wall covered externally with a mucilaginous sheet, which helps out in protecting these organisms from the transpiration. The heat that comes directly on these organisms to avoid the heat from the body, the mucilaginous sheet will be covering, okay, loss of water molecules. and <clears throat> These organisms are, are the autotrophic, uh, autotrophic in nature and the all are autotrophic in nature and the cell wall is main component of the cell wall is the cellulose, hemicellulose and the pectin. Okay, these three are the main components of the uh, cell wall compositions and the in this uh, one carbohydrates also we can include. 
Okay, that means they will ask us the composition of the cell wall and the algal members. That is the cellulose, hemicellulose, and the pectin. And the pectin is the one of the most important uh, composition in the cell wall of these algal members, which makes once it comes in contact with the water, this pectinous layer will become the gelatinous layer, which will use the slippery nature for these organisms. Through that, they can easily skip out from the prey from the uh, other organisms which are uh, what which wants to eat this plant body okay that's the most important one for this algal members the plus point for them also what we can say the pectinous layer which will become the gelatinous one once it comes once it comes in the contact with the water molecules <clears throat> and usually this in the pectin is the outermost layer component of the outermost layer for this algal members Next comes the, after this, the reserve and inside the cell, below the cell wall, having a thin plasma membrane. And this plasma membrane acts as a semi-permeable one, which will be controlling the outflow of the elements from these organisms. And inside the cell plasma membrane, the cytoplasm will be present, which is having the dense cytoplasm with all the cell organelles. And these are the eukaryotic organisms having a nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplast, and all the double membrane and the membranous organelles in them. That's the eukaryotic organisms characteristic features. And here, the mitochondria and the chloroplast. Chloroplast is the one most important one, how it will be present in the different, different organisms in different, different manner. Okay, that's the one what we have to say. And here the reserve food material in the form of the starch, but not the directly starch can be seen. Starch will be present in different forms in different, different organisms and the algal members itself. And again, the in the cytoplasm, it is having the different colored pigments in them. And because of these pigments only, the organisms will exhibit different colors. Some are the completely green color, belongs to the class chlorophyce. Okay. And the some are exhibiting the red color, those belongs to the class rhodophyce. And some are exhibiting the brownish, orangish color, which are comes under the class pheophyce. Okay. So, like this, three different classes are present in this subdivision algae based on the presence, based on the pigments which are present in the cytoplasm and the color that will be exhibited by the organism. This organism, this subdivision is divided into three classes uh, chlorophyce, pheophyce, and the rhodophyce. Chlorophyce organisms are commonly present in the <clears throat> normal water. Freshwater are the marine organisms, few are the marine organisms. And in this once in this chlorophyce members, the organisms exhibits only the green color for them. That's the most important one, what we have to think of this. And these organisms will be the having the unicellular to the multicellular nature. So some are unicellular organisms, example, clandomonas and the multicellular organisms, unbranched multicellular filamentous nature, that is the spirogera. And next comes the multicellular branched filament, okay, that is the chara. So like this, different kinds of the organisms are present, especially in this chlorophyce members only, we will see the some organisms are present in a colonial formation. That means making a colony-like occurrence of organisms. So that is the wall box. Wall box. That is the one which is having the colonial occurrence for the organisms. It will be present in a colonial form. All these organisms were linked to one another. That is the colonial formation of these organisms, what we can say in the algal member. And in this, how they will look? And in this, this is the parental colony. And inside this parental colony, again the daughter colony will be present. All these organisms are linked to one another with the cytoplasmic strands. 
and this parental colony will have a daughter colony in it. This is the daughter colony. So, whenever inside 